Hey guys, in this video, um, I'll show you how you can create a project proposal like this one, which has all the financial um, information, environmental, investor returns, and the detailed uh, cash flow. Yeah, along with the uh, assumptions used to uh, generate these results. Uh, so uh, first, let's uh, create a project. So just go to villagepower.com and actually first let's just create a project. So uh, let me uh, type the name of the project. So energy sample project. For the city, let's say uh, Palo Alto and Alpic State, that's California type of building private property. So let's first create a project and then I'll show you how um, to create a proposal for this uh, project. So uh, now that we have the project ready, I'll just go to the uh, financials tab because that's where the financial model is. And as you can tell, we don't have any results because we haven't provided any inputs. But we already have defaults, which make it very easy to uh, start populating these fields. So if you notice, as soon as I uh, start changing the field of the system size, I get the returns immediately. Yeah, so as you keep changing these uh, inputs, you can see the returns until you achieve the ones that uh, you need or you are optimizing for. Great, so before I start playing with these inputs, let me open the power tools because that's where I can get all the inputs that I need. So let's type the address first. Yeah, so let's say this is 3221 Portal Drive. Palo Alto. California. Great. So I have the roof here and let's size it. Let's see how many, how, what's this, the system size that can fit in here. Okay. I'll click return. Perfect. And now I get the, uh, the system size if I use sand power modules and if I use standard modules and also tells me the estimated electricity production and the PPA revenue. Yeah, the if you want to change any of the advanced inputs, that's how you do it. You just click on the height advanced fields, hit it till actually I have zero. As I click again and I model, perfect. And now I have the results. So if let's say um, I'm looking for a bigger system, I want to fit more than 58 kW in this roof, then I can always add that. Yeah, so, so let's aim for say something above 70 kW. So keep just changing this. Yeah, as you see, it's really flexible, super easy to do it. Um, just make it a little larger. Perfect. Let's try now. Click on model. Oh, perfect. Now I have 72. 27 kW. This is perfect. Now I can actually copy this number and go back to my financial model and then put that number. Awesome, and you see that the returns have changed immediately. Now let's move to the next input which is the EPC price. And the EPC price really depends on the, in the, on the uh, installer. But let's 
At this stage, you can actually change that number and see how that affects the returns and the uh, yeah for both for like the IRR, the ROI, and the payback time. Great. Now that I have an EPC price, let's see what is the uh, electricity production. So I just paid that number there. Awesome. So there are two ways to figure to figure that number out. You can either use the power tools or you can just click uh, use wizard and you can specify the tilt, the type of array. So it's this is where the now tracking and you see the number at the top has already updated for annual production. Yeah, so it's up to you whether you use this tool here or you or use um, power tools. Let me hide the wizard. And let me put the number that I had originally. Perfect. Uh, now let's put the avoided cost of energy. The avoided cost of energy is generally the um, um, you can figure that out if you have the electricity bills of the client. But if you don't have them, let's use power tools. So I'll just go to the utility rates, and this gives the, gives me the average cost of electricity for every um, city across the U.S. So if I'm in Palo Alto. For commercial, it is 0 0.117, assuming that this project is for a commercial uh, project. Perfect. So now I paste that. And as you see, my annual returns are negative. So to fix that, yeah, so you see as I change it to something, yeah, so that's something to keep in mind that the avoided cost of energy has a huge impact on the annual savings, but not necessarily the investor returns. The, PP, the PPA price, I should put something that is lower than the avoided cost of energy to get a an, uh, positive annual savings. And here, as you can see, I have a negative ROI. And that's probably because my APC price is high. So let me change that to say 0 0.5. No, that's not enough. 2.1, still not enough. Yeah, 2 gave me a positive ROI and a positive IRR and positive annual savings. And here I change the PA price. I can also improve it further. So let's let's go up to zero point one oh five. Great. So now at this stage, I already have the uh, the returns. Now, if I click update page, you will see that the returns are published now on my right for um, investors actually to see, or uh, your colleagues, or if you want to share the page with anyone they can see the, the section on the right. Now, if I click on view report, I can see the uh, detailed report of what I have just run. Task cost, PPA terms, ta tax assumptions, additional incentives, which we didn't enter yet, return summary. Uh, he noticed that we have two sections, returns for investors with passive income and for Investors with no passive income. I have also a detailed cash flow. The lifetime of the project. I also have the revenue and expenses for year one, economic benefits and environmental benefits. Yeah, so that's great. Now I'll go to view proposal. Great, so now I already have a proposal. So in a few minutes, you can actually generate something like this, which has all the financial information and environmental information relevant 
to the project. Yeah, and you also have, have the, the URL to the project page if you want to share it with people to, uh, to see the, uh, the project. Now let's, now that we are done with the, with the basic inputs, let's look at the advanced PV inputs. So at the advanced PV fields, you have the uh, annual degradation, which is a default of 0 0.5, that's the industry standard. And you also have the utility escalator and PPA escalators of four and 3%. These are the, the common values in the industry. So we probably don't need to change that. You also have the, inter the interconnection costs, the land costs, Yeah, I have also the efficiency EPC price. And that's actually in a thing that we have added to the system to improve its KWH. You also have the development and sales fees. And as you change those, you can see that the returns um, are changing there at the top. Here we have the buyout option, we have the incentives, yeah so they are all in here and you can also add the aspect schedule if you have one so for this project we don't have any but if you want to add one you basically just click on add new schedule like this and you can fill the information for every year great and now we are left with operations that operations are basically the expenses that are pretty much re recurring expenses that happen as the project uh, is is operating so everything that we filled before is basically a year one expense but these expenses are recurring expenses so we have insurance land lease asset management operating operation and maintenance annual reporting fee and inverter reserve and finally the last section is actually the project finance and these pull actually from a database. So you don't need to worry about the uh, actual values, but you can see that I, as I change these, I get the, uh, up, the outputs updated. But th this you don't have to worry about entering the values because we already pulled them from the, the database. You don't have to worry about those. Great, and now after doing the advanced uh, parts we can just click update page and everything gets updated our proposal gets updated the report gets updated the page gets updated and uh, yeah and this is pretty much showable to investors and colleagues so if you want to share the page with people who don't need necessarily to be able to modify the financial model use the invite friends tab if you want to add the champions champions being someone who can actually make modifications to the financial model, you can add them there. So that's the difference between invite friends and add champions. Great. So yeah, so now we have the uh, project proposal, which is ready to be shared. And you can also download here and share with um, whom you want to uh, share with. Uh, Last, if you have any questions, you can always use the help button here and just send um, if you have any questions and we'll answer as soon as we can.